Okay, so um, if we're looking at uh, comparing things on pH scale, for example, we usually call water neutral at 7 and soap a pH of 9. How many times more basic is soap than water? So the only tricky part about pH is you have to think in terms of what number is bigger and smaller on the scale. Another word, instead of hearing basic, you might also hear the word uh, alkaline. I'm probably going to spell, uh, let's see here. I think that's how you spell it. Um, but things that are more basic are bigger. Things which are more acidic are smaller. So that's how you have to kind of gauge it. So in this instance, we can see the pHs. We don't need to really worry about it that way. But if I want to compare them, it's going to be 10 to the 9 versus 10 to the 7. So I'm going to have, yeah, 100 times more basic. Um, battery acid has a pH of about 1.5. Don't go breaking into your parents' car to measure that. Um, if the pH of lemon juice is 4.2, how many times more acidic is battery acid than lemon juice? Any ideas? Anybody worked it into the calculator yet? 501. Yeah, just a little more than 501. So 4.2 minus 1.5, and we'd have about 501. Okay, so let's see if you can work this one backwards. Tomato juice has a pH of 5. It's 120 times more acidic than tap water. What is the pH of tap water? So this is like the earthquake one. You have to work backwards. Put the bigger number on top of your fraction. Which one's going to be bigger? Tap water. Think, yeah, you think about it, but... Okay, so we... Uh, thank you, Java, but not now. Um, tomato juice is 10 to the 5. Um, more acidic, it means it's smaller. It's smaller on the scale than tap water. So tap water is what I'm looking for. It's going to be on top. Compare it to tomato juice. It should be 120. So uh, this time, let's see here. 10 to the x equals one, oops, 120 times 10 to the 5. So uh, this is an exponential ex uh, expression. If I rewrite it as a log, that's the log of 120 times 10 to the 5 equals x. Sorry? Did you have a 7.8? 0, 8? Yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay, so I think that's... Um, about all we're going to do for scales. So scales are a pretty simple part, but they are uh, something that's quite common. Um, the next thing we're going to spend the rest of the day on is growth and decay. So for example, this one's maybe the most familiar to you. Um, it may also be terribly unfamiliar. So um, this is the compound interest formula. And there's a few things that are a little different here. So first of all, A of T is the amount at a given time. A0 is the initial amount, so what you started with. Um, R is the interest rate. And N, N is a tricky one, but it's better if we talk about it like an example. So N is the number of uh, compounds per period. So for example, if we got something that was compounded monthly and we were getting paid annual interest, N would equal 12 because we would compound it 12 times in the year. If we were getting um, paid out, let's say every semi-annually, that's twice a year, N would equal 2. So it takes into account how many times you compound it within the period. Okay, so the best examples I could give you if we said something like semi-annual, uh, annual, then n would be equal to 2. Some other terms you hear like quarterly, whoops, that's an r, quarterly equals 4, monthly would be 12, daily would be 365. Okay. Sometimes you end up getting, uh, sometimes you end up getting uh, your interest more often than, than you're paid out. 
Oh yeah, I said 360 because I can't talk and write at the same time. Yeah, monthly <laughs> is, I don't know, I'm sure there's a moon somewhere or a planet that's 365 months, but yeah, 12 months. Okay, so T is the time, time elapsed. So let's just take a look here. A grade 12 student chooses an invest, to invest a $1,500 scholarship in a term account which pays 5% per year, compounded semi-annually. What uh, will be the accumulated amount after three years? So here's, uh, of course, no grade 12 student would ever do this. They would take that $1,500, they'd buy the new iPhone, and then they'd probably get like, them, I don't know, something else. But certainly not uh, to put it away in savings. That's boring. But uh, if we wanted to work this into the formula, that would be the initial amount of $1,500. The interest rate is 5%. And um, it says semi-annually. So that happens two times in the year. So that's my N, and it will be three years worth of compounding. So that's the way it would be filled in in that formula. Okay, so that means it'd be about uh, $1,656.39 after three years. So you end up getting 156 bucks for your patients. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you know, the exponential graph is probably the least understood of the graphs that humans have to deal with. Um, it's one of those things, if you do it, it looks like this and it just starts to skyrocket. And um, I know I'm running out of page space there, but for most, if we were to do this exponential graph, you know, a lot of exponential graphs in your lifetime, you know, maybe your lifetime is just, sorry, maybe your lifetime is just this window here. So to you, it almost looks linear. It almost looks like a line. But as you go out multiple generations, you end up with problems like running out of oil or running out of food because the population <laughs> population grows like this, but the uh, uh, amount of food we produce doesn't. Yeah, Jackie. Well, the power is like one pound steel pound divided by two to the power of six. Say it again. This is like one plus steel pound steel pound divided by two to yeah. the power of six. No. The bracket score on the outside divided by six. I'm sorry, is there uh, some confusion I can? The brackets should be, the, the six exponent is to the entire thing here like this. Times by 1,500, yeah. So it may take you a little practice to get all that in the calculator on one shot. Okay, we'll try the second piece. If they could leave their money in the account, how long would it take for them to double? Okay, apparently, um, well, Jackie, can you tell me that? I must have put it in my calculator wrong. It's 1,739. Something else. 54? Okay. So let's set up the, uh, this time around what we're looking for is we want it to go to 3,000 from 1,500. And 1 plus 0 0.05 over, whoops, going to sleep there, um, over 2. And it's the time that I don't know. So I'll leave time as my unknown. And this is the equation I'm trying to solve. So I'll let you try work on that and see if you can rearrange it for the time. You're going to need a log to do this. Of course, we don't have that log on the calculator, so we're going to need to use the change of base rule. Um, I'll divide both sides by 2 here first, maybe. So it'll be the log of 2 divided by the log of 1.025, and then the whole thing divided by 2. That's the time. Okay, so at this rate, it looks like it's going to take about 14 years in order to double. A little bit more. 